trying to put this together. Thank you, Victor Taplin, for suggesting. I'm really glad he's put me in touch with you, and I'm really happy to welcome you to the set and to Manhattan Network. And uh, welcome, welcome very much in the con in the audience. Uh, our guest for this hour is Elder George, and he's billed as the chief of Men's Action to Rebuild Society. And he's also an author of a book, Dear Brothers and Sisters, Gender and Its Responsibility. And uh, we're going to be talking about some of these matters. And George, Elder George, if I may, welcome very, very much to conversate. Real good pleasure to welcome you to the program. Harold, I thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and an opportunity to present my message to your listeners. Right, good enough. And as I know, you've been saying to me, you have a kind of outline with some premises and so forth mm -hmm. that, that sort of helps frame your 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 belief system in, in, in what you see. And maybe why don't you? It's, it it would take maybe five minutes. You read those through, and that'll give us the thing that we can address and so forth. And you give you a chance to set out your view of things in a kind of paradigm way. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is what I'll I'll be presenting, you know, and then we can kick it around. Mm -hmm. My message is that gender came into existence at the time of the creation of the universe. Uh, patriarchy, which is the natural expression of gender, uh, provides the structure through which gender operates. Family is the focal point of human civilization, and patriarchy is family. Western thought is feminine and materialistic and does not understand patriarchy. It has produced an unbalanced society. Society can't be changed from within the system. I think even you agree with that. The system created all the problems. Change must come from outside the system. The system can't be changed. It'll collapse. It's collapsing. Change will take place among people who see the importance of gender and the spiritual way of life. Our objective of men's action to rebuild society is to promote uh, a more natural way of life for humankind. And we have our objectives, and if we have time later, uh, we'll discuss it. Oh, okay. It worked to promote mm -hmm. the mission statement, and okay. you got the mission to foster a natural way of life for humankind. Right. And then, if I may, objectives, rebuild the family, right. establish a community-based tribal structure, promote a spiritual and material balance, and then foster respect for the environment and a lifestyle that results in health and well-being. Right. That's part of your 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 objectives and your yes, mission statement. Yes. That's really very very interesting. You've been on this for quite a long time. I wonder if maybe you could share a little bit. I like to on this. We got 58 minutes. A little of your own background, please. When you were born and raised, that kind of thing. And we'll get back to this. But you're a New Yorker, I guess. Oh, right? I'm a native New Yorker. Right. Right. Okay. I was I was born in in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Raised in Queens. Uh, I went to, uh, for those, well, this is a New York audience, it isn't is. it, for the most well, part? Well, except, okay. don't forget, George, it's uh, streaming on the Internet, uh, so it can be seen internet. everywhere. I, I went to Brooklyn Technical High School, uh -huh. okay. Uh, I, I majored in architecture, that's in high school. Uh -huh. Then I went to Kings Point, the uh, United States Merchant Marine Academy. Mm -hmm. I spent four, five years at sea, one as a, as a midshipman, two as a naval officer, two as a merchant officer. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate... Uh, especially in those days, I traveled all over the world and there weren't any tourists. <laughs> uh, Cook's tour, right? Uh, yeah. That's it. Mm. I, I saw it when... You know, I tell people, I went to the Acropolis uh -huh. and I was the only person on it. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that, my, myself and, and the guide. Yeah, that, right, that, right. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my background. I went into business. I had a small business. I was married, had a family, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, and about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, the, the problems of society started weighing heavy on me. Yeah, they are now. And we're talking, mm -hmm. they're just going over that mm -hmm. bill that's going to change right. everything economically or is in the process right. of challenging a great number of the assumptions by which uh, our economic order has been organized, not only be under Mr. Bush, but over a long mm -hmm. period of time in terms of the economic theory that underpin it's a time of mm -hmm. real change perhaps opportunity, mm -hmm. but uh, we're at that mm -hmm. day now that they just passed in the House. So things are changing. The earth is shaking, and a lot of people are saying we need change. Yeah. Well, I, I feel the change is going to be more fundamental than mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. But getting back, you're asking me, you know, yeah. about 20 years ago, 15 uh -huh. years, I felt there was something fundamentally wrong mm -hmm. right, with society, and I felt it had to do with gender, the difference between men and women in mm -hmm. our society. 
And um, I, I thought about it a great deal. I, mm -hmm. I saw the feminine characteristics, masculine characteristics, and it wasn't fitting in. And then I read this book, The Kybalion, which is uh, mm -hmm. supposedly the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus from 4,000 years ago. N not the god Hermes, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. The Hermes Trismegistus, not, not, not that well known. He was a real person, in, yeah? Right. He was considered yeah. the father of all religions, the tutor to Abraham. Hermes was the most uh, f fundamental, authoritative uh, thought on matters spiritual up until the time of Christ. That's really interesting. Where, where, where did he reside? Egypt. Did he in Egypt. He was uh, an Egyptian. 4,000 About 3,000 years, years, around the time of Abraham, right. Uh, have, you ever, have you ever heard of Mithra? Yes. Yeah, Mithra was also Persian. Right, the Mithraics, and they were later. They were, well, uh, I, see, I see them being mm -hmm. earlier yeah. than that. And that they were, they were there, and uh, well, it, by the time it got to Rome, uh, they were, there were, it was a major deity. The, the, what's now the, the uh, Vatican Hill was a temple to Mithra, and you had a lot of people in Rome before Constantine who were there, and it was a monotheistic kind of thing prior to, to Ur, to, to uh, Abraham. Okay, and it was Persian because we got a we got a right. confrontation going with Persia now. That's a very old civilization. Right. But Hermes, that's interesting. I'll have to look that up. I really will. He's that's known good. as Hermes Trismegistus, and he's not well known in the West. Well, in we're going to we're going to find out about yeah. him. Okay, Thank he's you not for only believing. in the Kybalion, but in the uh, the Divine Pymander is also another book contains the teachings of okay. Hermes. Okay. Anyway, I read his book, and he yeah. had two chapters in it: one on mental gender one on gender, mm -hmm. and I said, this, this was the bow that was missing for me to wrap up my package. I see. Not you that I got all my information from him. Right, but that right, was, right. He put it in the principle that there is a universal principle of gender, uh, okay. and, which I recognized. Well, okay. okay. And I have since elaborated on it. Mm -hmm. Now, just briefly, let's take this cup sitting right here. Mm -hmm. That cup will stay there mm -hmm. unless an assertive force comes to move it. Yeah, if see. not, it'll be here overnight, mm -hmm. it'll be here next week, it'll be here 500 years from now when the ar archaeologists come in and say, that's the way they drank water I, I guess 500 so, yeah. years ago. Mm, I'm not sure that it, water there. It requires an assertive influence, mm -hmm. and the cup has to be receptive. Mm -hmm. Not willing, mm -hmm. but receptive. Mm -hmm. Now, everything that we do in life mm -hmm. requires the interaction of an assertive influence and a receptive entity. Okay, go on. Spell it out. Yeah. You open the door. The door has to be receptive. If the mm -hmm. door had a will, you wouldn't be able to open the door. Mm -hmm. Or you may open it when it was willing to be opened, mm -hmm. and you may close it when it was willing to be closed. You go to your car. You start it. The car is in a receptive state. You can mm -hmm. start it. You put, flip the light switch. Whatever happens in this universe, mm -hmm. or any form of action, mm -hmm. there's an assertive influence acting upon a receptive entity. There yeah. can't be two assertive influences. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, okay go can on. Can we yeah, go, go along with no, that? No, I'm listening. I'm listening, yeah. Okay. And by the way, mm -hmm. I, I think for the benefit of, of the viewers, let me elaborate on why there can't be two. When we speak of hot and cold, right, quiet and noisy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, light and dark. Mm -hmm. They're not six influences. There are three. Three. You can add more light or remove light. You cannot make dark. Mm -hmm. We have lighting engineers. Mm -hmm. We don't have dark engineers. Mm -hmm. right? You can make more sound or less sound. You mm -hmm. can't make quiet. Isn't there a law that says a force and it will have an equal and an equal reaction and that there's a resultant from that? That's and it. But there, I or you have the dialectic thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. That's right. That and fits. And you have a I to, That's not in, in, in conflict with what I'm saying. Okay. okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same thing with heat. You mm -hmm. add heat or remove heat. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't Thermal, make cold. You get a non-thermal dynamics. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So you can't have two. You can only have one because, in other words, if you set your thermostat, if there was such a thing as cold, you could never get your thermostat set. You can there only is. control heat. There is absolute zero, as they try to measure it in Kelvin, right. but it, they haven't been able to get to absolute zero but yet, can, but they're getting damn close. True, yeah. Harold, but mm. you can only get to it by removing heat. Uh, well, it's in universe, though, right. I think. Not yeah. by making cold, mm. okay? Well, okay, I'm so, trying to follow, yeah. Okay, so mm. there's always one assertive influence. So we have 
one god, one sun in the solar system, one captain of a ship, one anything, okay? Mm. And one head of the household, mm -hmm. one head of the tribe. One president. One whatever, yeah. one, uh -huh. all right? Now, we call the assertive influence the masculine principle. Okay. And the receptive entity the feminine principle. They do have a representation of the masculine as an arrow, which indicates a movement or movement. something. Movement. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we'll get to it later in vocabulary and what have you. But in any event, that's what produces everything. For instance, let's take the North Pole and the South Pole. The North Pole is masculine. It shoots a charge to the South Pole, and what happens to the South Pole? It gets pregnant and produces magnetism. The anode in a car battery mm -hmm. is the masculine principle. It shoots a charge to the cathode, which is the feminine. Mm -hmm. It gets pregnant and makes electrons. Mm -hmm. Very simply put, everything initiated in the world comes from the masculine principle. Mm -hmm. Everything produced comes from the feminine principle. That's really interesting. That's a mouthful, that's a, that's isn't it? That's a mouthful there. Everything that is what is masculine? Initiated. Initiated, and everything that's produced, produced is feminine. Fem for instance, let's mm. take the relationship of the sun to the earth. Mm. Right? The sun can't produce anything. The sun is there. Yeah. Okay? In order for there to be production, it needs the feminine principle, the earth, mm. which is responsive to the energy of the sun, to the, to the uh, gravity of the sun, mm -hmm. and what have you. Mm -hmm. So in order to have a functioning, to be, be creating life, mm -hmm. there has to be a solar system. There's plenty of stars in the universe. Yeah. Lots. Lots, but mm -hmm. there's no planets running around them. As far as okay. we know, yeah. As far well, as there we are know. some, Titan and right. Jupiter and things like oh, that. All we right. There are suns Very and few moons. is yeah. what I meant. Very yeah. few. Yeah. Okay. So in order to produce life, to produce anything, you need the other half. There is no sun that's creating life within itself. It's really interesting, and it's getting at some basic premises, isn't it? Trying to get at some basic mm -hmm. premises, you know, about how did it all get started, mm -hmm. or where did it all come from, or the original source? What would be the original source? Well, my of, feeling let's is say the Big Bang. The Big they're, Bang. They got that thing going in CERN now. Did you see that? I was right. really happy that fired up well, and they're going to get down to where they can take the measure of the shock wave within a nanosecond, within a billionth of a second of the birth of our universe. 13.7 billion years ago. That's pretty okay. staggering, but what comes before that? The initial source. I mean, that's a, th those are some of the philosophical questions that are identified. And I wonder, because I see I took exception to one of your major premises. Uh, gender came into existence at the time of the creation of the physical universe. I don't think that's true. Uh, we just did a program a couple of weeks ago with a fellow who's the leading person, I guess, or at least summar summarizes the leading research by our scientists and understanding how did we get from a, let's say, on Earth. Mm -hmm. We had a process of um, development about four, 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 four and a half billion years ago. The Earth formed, and it was about 3.7 years ago that a gigantic singularity occurred out of what had been the primordial ooze, or whatever you'd want to call it, or the alphabet soup. But it got from a process where it was all chemical and inorganic to where it crossed that major frontier of the beginning of organic process on this planet, of which we're a resultant in the long run. So evolution, once you get to that, you can understand the development of consciousness and everything mm -hmm. else. But he said that that was uh, in about, um, it, it, and just to go to RNA is too much of a leap, even much less to DNA and that there were systems that they're coming to understand. How did that happen? How did that occur? And so um, we're beginning to understand these things, and we're in this universe, and we're coming to understand it better all the time, aren't we, comprehensively? Mm -hmm. When we get to where we're going to be able to measure the shock wave within a billionth of a second of the birth, that's a pretty big uh, measure in terms of being able to take the measure of things on a comprehensive scale. But for most of that period, there wasn't any gender it was mostly bacteria or pre-bacteria, probably something like um, 70 to 80 percent of the time of any organic kind of process going on. There wasn't any gender. It wasn't anything said there had in terms of procreation and that kind of thing. I feel it, it wasn't was. at all. It wasn't at all certain that they had to go. It had to go. It went in a certain way. But it didn't have to go sexual or gender uh, for right. there to be processes that would be just self. 
And some of these expert systems and computers they're doing now, they do not have to have that kind of a gender consideration. So the major premise is one that it, it wasn't in the creation of the physical universe. Thirteen point seven. Okay, well that's a that's a premise. That's no, the right. kind of thing. I, that a lot I of feel are there is on. no movement. Right? Does, it doesn't have to be organic. Mm -hmm. No, uh, that's just one process. In other words, we... the Earth, right? Mm -hmm. e say empty, no life on it or wh whatsoever, or take take another planet. Yeah. The, the the movement of that planet is governed by gender. Well, okay. If you you, you say the mo it's by the laws of physics, yeah. But its gender is uh, usually associated with organic forms. That's the that's Western the concept that people, of it. Well, that's interesting also to me, if I could, Elvin. Right. Uh, you know, because it's really interesting. You seem to think that the, or you assert, then, and then you got other dialectics where they say, the, remember Kipling said, the East is East and West is West and mm -hmm. never the twain shall meet. Mm -hmm. Or you got up and down, you got black and white, mm -hmm. you got all these things, right, left, you got all these kind of things of a dialectic and so forth. But in terms of understanding the universe, generally it's the Eastern. Uh, a philosophical approach that is thought of as feminine and the Western active extension of technology and a lot of that kind of thought is thought of as being uh, Western European, is thought of as being masculine and you got them reverse, which is very interesting. Yeah. I don't quite see how yeah. you got to that. Right. If we want to talk at that level. I have no problem with it, but I just mm. yeah. I understood your point about the creation and my point still is once there was a physical universe, mm -hmm. nothing happens by accident in this universe. Well, you were mentioning cause and effect before. Yeah. If anything moves, mm -hmm. there's a force that moves it. Yeah, so well. once the physical universe came into being, yeah. gender came into being because there was no other way for anything to move. Well, I mean, no, wait a minute. There were things moving that were not gender. I mean, there no. were, I mean, you energy, I mean, there's no loss of energy, and we have the second law of thermodynamics mm. that everything moves toward entropy mm. within a system. We understand these things mm. from our intellectual understanding. We're talking intellectual, we're mm. not talking anything other than that now, and so uh, there wasn't any gender in, in that for, uh, gender is a I'm thing. I'm calling it gender. Okay, you're you want to call not. it gender, but you're okay. talking about things, spirits, the beginning of the universe and physical forces, and you did talk about that, so that's interesting, mm. and you put a stake on it. Could I share one little thing for you? Because mm -hmm. I'm interested in everything mm -hmm. and everything. Well, and it's true, and it's just a little story. Maybe it's an illustrative. I don't know. I, I think there is a feminine kind of way and a masculine mm -hmm. way. I think they're in all of us, and I think that they're 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 in sync with one another in a certain way, that is good for understanding. But we know for sure uh, it was about 650 million years ago, on this earth. All fauna was contained in unicellular spongiform, self-replicating. Unifungiform, all was there. And so, if, and if you can imagine like a geodesic or a, a, a basketball, uh, not a, mm -hmm. a, a soccer ball, you know, it's round, mm -hmm. it's got depth, and it's got what they call tensegrity. There is, there's compression and there's tension. And if you do that, but if you're there, and you see, let's let's pretend we were a, a unicellular spongiform. There could be forces operating there. I made a joke about it one time. Who would say, "Well, we got here. You could make an animation. You could make a cartoon of. We got here. This is really pretty cool. This is pretty cool where we are now. Let's put up some curtains, and let's make sure everybody's got uh, taken care of, and all that. Let's let's really make this state go. It'd be like steady state." Okay, and we would still be in that state. That's like feminine. It's inclusive of the whole. It's inclusive of everything, and it's got a kind of round quality. And then there's a tensional integrity that goes through that. That would be male. And when if it's there, you got to perfect that. And if they get through to where it resonates on the edge of the whole, and everything is included in a nurturing, what's called nurturing way, then there might be a transformation of that system to another one in an evolutionary context where something new comes. But if we were just steady state back there 650 million years ago, 
and there wasn't a movement that was coming out of the reaction of the two feminine and ma masculine functions in universe. Maybe it's better to think about a function in universe than gender. I don't think there wasn't such a thing as a steady state. Oh, or, no, there or, was, if there was, then we would have been there. Oh, and there's some people who would think that would be okay. But that there's a movement, and so we get evolution and we get change. And we may right. be at a time where that system, we do not have tensional integrity of the system in place for, let's say, human affairs now, that is relevant to what the earth needs if we're going to maybe make a transition from where we've been for 200,000 years. We don't have a system in place that takes care of the whole, nurtures the whole system. That's a feminine thing, right? And it's there, and you need to have attention that would resonate on the edge of that total system and then bring a new evolutionary development of a new way of being in universe as part of evolution. But they're, they're, they're co-determinants and they're in both uh, male and female, don't you think? They are. Okay. What, what you said, the feminine system about, mm. you know, nurturing. Include everybody. Right. The feminine f system cannot work unless it's in the environment created and maintained by the masculine principle. Well, perhaps I'm wondering, is that true? That's well, I'll, I'll give you an example. Well, we've got a system now that's been run by a group of people... George Bush and company, masculine, you know, they're going to put out a oh, system. Oh, come on. We, no, you're it's giving me a little microcosm here. No, it's not a, a microcosm. It, it, it is an example of the collapse of, of, of Western thought. Well, uh, not Western thought, if I may. Uh, you were an uh, officer. Uh, I was only uh, a buck private and everything. Okay. But, you know, we've now got systems and we've got knowledge. Mm -hmm. We can understand things in a way that we haven't been able to out of history. And we've got systems now. And do you think it's true? Maybe I could ask mm -hmm. you. Do you think it's true now? Because all the technology that exists is an extension of consciousness, right? We've got that. We had a we had extension of consciousness. We've been here 200,000 years, we know, as a species. And all of that technology, that a leading edge, a lot of that, uh, the leading edge of that has been consistently throughout the human experience, military. And we developed a club, then we got a bow and arrow, then we got a rifle, we got a musket, we got a Gatling gun, we got a dreadnought, we got all, we did that. And now we've got systems where the modeling, and we can only test it with modeling, is such that if there was to be an unleashing of the weapons capability for us to destroy ourselves, mm -hmm. apparently now, do you think it's true, I wonder, uh, uh, that if there was an unleashing of that in a spasm of hatred like we've been experiencing throughout so much of the human experience, that it would mean the end of the entire you, uh, hominoid line? Well, I hope not. No, no, I'm asking you, what is your sense? What do you think? I feel that there'll be damage. No, no, I didn't ask you uh, that. Do you think it's the end of the species because most of the models I said, I say hope there not. is no... I know. <laughs> but, okay. But most of the modeling says that there was no question. It's not a thing of hope or not. Mm. That that is now the case. That we've reached an existential point in the evolution of consciousness where... The uh, unleashing of the destructive capability is now existentially new in terms of our status in the universe. Do you understand? And um, do you think that that's the case? Couldn't do it in the Second World War. Remember, we were trying Dresden. We firebombed. We firebombed Hiroshima. We were trying to kill each other as best we possibly could, so right. we could steal the grain and set up a system in the name of some political right. system and everything. And we've gotten now to a point where that thing cannot be done. I mean, it can't be unleashed mm -hmm. in the way that it has. And we got all of these things trending in that direction. So that this is a moment of qualitative transformation, perhaps in the evolution of consciousness. And maybe that model, the nurturing model of the whole being brought in, there might be on the averse side of that view or that exists at an ontologic level, right. that, ex right. that is a reality. On the other side, we may have a liberating capability that has not been characteristic of history, equally existentially significant if we get the system, the nurturing system whole for everybody as a whole organism, Gaia, we may be ready to transcend where we've been for 200,000 years now. That would be the feminine, the two in, in combined in combination. We may be at that moment now of a qualitative transformation in our relationship to universe, we may, and that will be synergistic resonancy to a level of consciousness higher than we've mm -hmm. been throughout our existence on the planet. Do you, do you think that may be the case? I don't. But that's the male and female. All right. 
and the, the, the male has not yet provided the tensional integrity that goes through the hole with a system that engages the hole in a nurturing way, which has to be done, and it's no wonder mm -hmm. that the, 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 the feminine principle is a little bit upset that they got a system, you just got a bunch of men trying to run through the gate first so that well, they're going to liberate is, themselves are, of their tribe without a comprehensive vision that uh -huh. encourages both sides of gender images mm -hmm. that we have, or spiritual traditions, and they're both coterminous, and they both have to be there if we're going to, as they put, uh, make it, rather than join entropy and, uh, and destroy our line. Okay. That's the context of the you, gave what a you pr put. presentation there. Huh? Now I'm going to. Okay, yeah, yeah, All right. address it. I feel that entire concept is European feminine materialistic thinking. Mm -hmm. All right? This, what you are talking about, is, is a product, not of 250,000 years, but a product of Western, we call it civilization. I'll not 250,000, excuse me, uh -huh. Elder, uh -huh. not 200,000. Uh -huh. 200,000 200, years of mitochondria. Whatever. Two, that's it's, when our species it, it, appeared. Wh whatever, 200, 250, What makes a difference? It, not to me. No, we have to understand. We want to be in touch with the understanding that we have that's adequate and can be t tested. To me, it's irrelevant whether oh. it's 200 and 250,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, it okay. is. Okay. Well, to me, it is. Just to get the facts right. To, the facts are only man-made European within the narrow European paradigm of time and space. That European is you. Don't you think the European paradigm, the bizarre? Harold, I, I can't. You, you, oh, know, I'm you, sorry. you gave ahead. you a thing. Go ahead. I would yeah. like to elaborate right. a little means, bit on, I, on this thing. Yeah. I think the bizarre. Now you you keep looking up, upon these problems in a grossly materialistic manner. Well, okay. okay, which is the wedge Western educational system, the time and space system. That's the Western mind. It's female. Time and space are a Western uh, 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 god, so to speak. Productivity is Western. Now, I can't answer all the different things that you brought up at the same time, but about warfare, as mm -hmm. a for instance. Mm -hmm. Warfare in most societies prior to Western civilization had to do with do we have enough to eat? The tribe on the other side of the mountains got the river. We don't have the river. We need fish. If they don't let us fish in their river, we're going to have to go to war. Okay. Yeah, Western society and Western economics, and they're all tied together, has to go in and control it all. Okay, it's yeah. a different viewpoint for warfare. Secondly, well, that's been consistent, mm -hmm. hasn't it, throughout the human society? It has been It's been in the East and in the West. No, both, it's been consistent in the Western way of thinking. And you want the Western to be feminine. Uh, Harold, I have to let you, yeah, know, you, you gave a big dissertation on this, and I'm trying to okay. give another viewpoint yeah. on mm -hmm. this. Now, you know, and I don't base anything on what I'm saying on religious principles, but I'm just going to refer to some that we, we know. Okay. Jesus said, mm -hmm. my kingdom is not of this world. Right. Right? That blew the minds of European thinking at the time, and it was European thinking there in Israel. Your, okay? your European was Rome, right? You know, yeah. the Greeks were there 300 yeah, the years Greek before, before the Ptolemaic dynasties, and all. it yeah. was saturated with Greek thought, okay, yeah. European okay. thought. Yeah, absolutely, classical. Yeah. Then the, the people wonder, well, my kingdom is not. So then later Jesus said, my kingdom is not in one place or another. Mm -hmm. My kingdom is within. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. They never got it. They never got it. Mm -hmm. He said, what does it suffer a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? They never got it. They didn't get it then. They don't get it to this day. The whole educational system, the whole economic system is predicated upon the world of time and space that I can touch and female. And That's that female. That's female. That's, I wanted to see female. That's the world as it exists. That's the females there saying, this is cool, let's put up some curtains. Back 650,000 million years ago. The female principle nurtures life. Right, it, and it nurtures all of it life. It nurtures all of life, and okay. it nurtures it in the material sense. Right, well, we're It talking. feeds the baby, it puts clothes on the baby. It, you know, it, that's what the feminine principle does. It deals with what there is, 
and nurtures it. Well, in the words of tensegrity, that would be uh, compression, and you got mm-hmm. tension, and the tension goes through it. Now, and it makes it like a soccer it ball. It can only it's a do that. Structure. The the masculine principle. See, I have it very simple as philosophy here. The masculine principle provides the environment and the means for the feminine principle to bring forth life and nurture it. Now, that's not European. The European thing is we got to make money. See, we need a material world. We're looking for the world outside, not inside. See? And we create all kinds of philosophies and theories. Harold, didn't yeah. you ever wonder why all the theories of this world come out of Europe? If you know what you're doing, you don't need a theory. Uh-huh. All the studies come out of Europe. They've got to study everything. No matter what the heck it is you talk about, they've got to make a study, refer to a study, because they don't know anything. Knowledge is intuitive. Uh, Information, see, information, you were talking prior to the program about testing and not testing. Information can be proven. Information. How to bake an apple pie or how to build a bridge, you can prove that. Well, yeah, with India, we can do more and more. I would say we can do that. Knowledge cannot be provable. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is understood. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is of the unseen. Mm -hmm. It is not quantifiable. Okay? You either get it or you don't get it. I agree with that. Okay? And it's also synergetic. Are you familiar with that term? Go ahead. Yeah, synergy is the behavior of systems unpredicted by the sum of its parts. Okay. There's something resonatingly more than the sum of the parts, which is a resultant. And so that, that, that's an interesting thing. It seems, to, and if, if um, 250,000 years ago when we were contained in Homo habilis, let's say, we maybe got to Homo habilis, after oscillopithecine and so forth, we did not have the ability to take the measure consciously of the universe that we were born into. We were born in uh, to a universe, we were in Eden and the metaphor of uh, being in touch and that sort of thing. But now, now, if we're coming to the point where we're going to come into a new relationship to the universe, it's like we've been gestating as a species for 200,000 years, and we're coming full term now, when we get to the point where that process of extended consciousness is now species lethal. The other side of it, it would be liberating if you had, do you know something, how many cells there are in a human organism? No, I mean, it's interesting. It's staggering. Billions, to I suppose. It's really something, not the life cycle, but in an average hum, you, you, human organism, there's something like a hundred trillion, mm. hundred trillion mm. cells in a human organism. Every cell matters. Every cell needs oxygen, the semi-permeable, it's a miracle that it works. How the hell it works, I don't know, but or the creatures that are there, everything matters. And that's the kind of thing, like, if you could apply that, it's dangerous. Haushofer did that with the geopolitical thinking of all kinds of politically organized things that do, uh, you know, models from biology for the human affairs. It's dangerous and everything like that, like it's in a... But uh, the guy of my idea that... Humanity, you got vast majority of humanity cannot function at a material level because they do not, if you're a mother and you've got two kids, one's going to starve to death because there's not enough food to eat, okay? You can't be realizing your full potential in a sense of there being everybody liberated in a certain kind of thing. And it's like a bodhisattva, you, the bodhisattva will reach samadhi or some sort of thing and then they will come back and then make sure that the whole system is liberated, not just a few who are rushing through the gate in, in, a, in a model. And we may be at that point now. And the, what there would be if you had liberated humanity and we, as they call it, make it to where we get a liberated order rather than annihilating the species, if we get to that point, there will be a resonancy that will inter-accommodate us to universe at a level transcendent to what we've been, it'll be a resonancy, a synergistic resonancy to higher orders of a priori mystery. So we may be transcending human, you know, we may be liberating. So, but you can't know that when you're inside the womb. You're gestating. Right. That's what we've been doing. So we got spiritual things to try to take the measure of the whole universe. We didn't have the knowledge base, the male, the knowledge base, the this tensional integrity of the whole system that brought the whole system into a functioning order that is liberating, and that's the challenge now. But that's the feminine. 
that, that, that's the feminine that compression. sword that, that you have. And is, it is synergistic. Yes. It is not un, we can't know it from where we are. That thought that you have, mm -hmm. that you, you just e explained very well, is European feminine materialistic thinking. That's interesting. That's the world that it sees, and it can't conceive that perhaps there were higher civilizations and lower civilizations, and that we've been through this thing before. Okay, See, when? Be because what difference does it make when? Time and space, again, are, are relativities. Time and space are relativities. It's the spirit that's real. Well, that synergistic resonance has to do with the spiritual realm beyond, beyond this. It might be the face of God or something in the traditional Whatever. wisdom school, that sort of thing. But we're now in a material thing where we're, we're, we're confronted at a materialistic level. That's usually associated with the West. Europe is thought of as male and, and materialistic. It's really interesting you put that female. I don't I'm glad you, you, you mentioned it because yeah, yeah. I, I feel it's really the wrong. It, it, I mean, to me, it's so obvious, yeah, okay? okay? We've eliminated male authority in this society for the most part. What? Okay. You think we have? Uh, you, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to react. It's Just a, because a man does something, we have a man president, it doesn't mean it's male you don't think we well, live in a patriarchy, or we have lived in a patriarchy? We've had a patriarchy. Wait, you not recognize that. The Western world has never known a patriarchy. How are we differentiating the Western world from the Eastern? If that's the what Europeans, it would be? the Europeans, right? right? I recognize that, but I can't help but see that as a, as a patriarchy. I don't know where there's been anything throughout history that wasn't, except with a couple of little exceptions, a patriarchy. It's all been uh, a patriarchy. Extended East, family, West, North, and South. Extended family okay. is patriarchy. Okay. Extended family can only come from male authority. Extended family does not exist anywhere in Europe except as it was brought there by Africans or Asians. Wait a minute. Extended family? There's extended families all over the place. Where? Well, uh, out of history, we used to have extended families on our frontier, or there I mean, you'd have uncles and aunts and cousins, and they would get together, and they were there, and it was uh, an extended family. It's only been in the more recent experience. How did they get to the frontier? Nuclear. How did they get to the frontier? Covered wagon. How, when? Where did they come from? The covered wagon came out of where a did shop those where people, it was made by hand. Where did those people? They came from Europe. They left. Oh, here you're talking. They about, left. They've had extended family. They have extended families in in Africa. They have extended families in India. They have extended Harold, families I, uh, in you, China. You, you, you didn't I'm excuse sorry, me. I'm, you didn't just, hear me on I'm that. I'm sorry. I no. said the the only place you'll find extended family in Europe is where it came from, either the Africans or the Asians. That's right. Uh, uh, Denise, I'm, well, I'm, uh, let me okay. explain it to okay. you, all right? We, the South Italians, the Sicilians, yeah. they're long on family. Very. You've heard of the Carthaginians, all of right? Course. Hannibal, the guy with the elephants, the elephants and all of that. Yeah. They occupied Sicily for more than a century. Incidentally, elephants have a 22-month gestation, and the herds are largely just uh, ladies. Okay. Can we? Yeah, go, go right. on. Yeah, I just sorry to get off uh, on elephants then. GOP. Uh, uh, so uh, that's where extended family came from in southern Italy and in Sicily, okay, well, from the Carthaginians. Okay. If you go to northern Italy, they don't have that to that degree. The, the Balkan nations got it from the Ottoman Turks, right, and the Persians and what have you. You, you take that out of Europe. Right? Yeah. You do not find extended family. You find what they're so happy and proud to call nuclear family. Okay. Well, now, the nuclear family mm -hmm. is associated with Europe. Right. Right. In the modern experience. Right. In and the modern experience. Right. And, and America. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And nuclear. Has to do with the economics and stuff. Yeah. And nuclear family cannot sustain itself. Well, it's a lot of nuclear family, uh, those, those extended families. I used to know all my aunts and uncles and granddaughters. We'd get together and everything, and that's all breaking okay. up in our modern society. But it's a modern thing, I thought, of no, the nuclear no. family being so since the, Since you don't have patriarchy, and patriarchy takes care of everyone, there's nobody left. Let me. Okay. Nobody left in it. I understand. Now, yeah. the nuclear family requires 
uh, uh, reformatories. Uh, uh, um, it requires old age homes. It requires nurseries. It requires the institutionalized care of European of, of people is a European export. I want your viewers to get that clearly. Yeah. The institutionalized care of people is a European export. There were no old age homes in India before Western men went there. Mm -hmm. There were no, uh, what is it uh, for, uh, for, for children? What's the word that I, I, I want to use? Uh, 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 orphanages? Uh, uh, orphanages and, and what, what is the, the system we have here now? Foster care. Foster okay? care. Yeah, well, I, I knew a person from, uh, from Kenya, mm. and she told me in her dialect, yeah. uh -huh. there isn't even a word uh -huh. for foster care uh -huh. or orphan. There is no such thing. Uh -huh. okay? okay? So all the institutionalized care of human beings uh -huh. is a European export to the rest of the world. The rest of the world was patriarchal. Now you're talking about the new order and the different things and George Bush and, and all of that. We're almost completely institutionalized now at every level. Go on, spell At it every on level, it. okay? Yeah. We have old age homes, get rid of the old people and stick them prisons. there. We got prisons, we, we, we got uh, uh, orphanages, uh, we, we've got this, we've got that. So everybody is compartmentalized and who's running it? Who's running it all? The government. The government. Well, and investment bankers. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, but largely, we but have not a man, Harold. Not a man. Not a man. It's mostly no. men that run it. There's no. a system, isn't it? The, the Most system. of the people who are set up, it's like... Uh, Harold, I don't care who runs the system. The mm -hmm. point I'm trying to make is that the system has replaced the man. We answer to the system. Well, the men make up the system. System. The European man made the system up because he thinks in a feminine, materialistic way. Wait, wait, you, that's the differentiation. So uh, a feminine is materialistic, you're saying? Of course that? it is. You do. I'm as a material to, girl. Isn't that from Madonna? Right? That's Madonna came right. up with that, talking about the introduction of the Reagan era and right. everything like that. But if you're, if you're saying uh, uh, the feminine is materialistic as opposed to spiritual, or what is the other side of the materialistic view? The, your the unseen, the conceptual. The unseen, the, the synergetic, or the unknown, or the mysterious? Not, no, not the mis complete. No, no, the no. Mm -hmm. Unseen. Unseen. Okay, the and unseen. Western man has a terrible, terrible uh, problem trying to understand the unseen. The unseen, as opposed to the material. Right. That's okay. his problem. Uh -huh. That's why he's raised science to such a great level. He's made a god of the material world. What is science? Uh -huh. I'll give you the, a Georgism, an elder Georgism an elder on George's science. An okay? definition of science. Science yeah. is Western man's somewhat orderly record of his ignorance about the world he lives in and himself. Who isn't ignorant of the world we live in? Who is not ignorant? Where is wisdom? Okay, where is this that? is where a relative. That's a relative thing. Oh, it the is, way you, you, you it is you're relative, saying. or uh, is yeah. it relevant to us? No, not to this. I'm trying to get what you posit against the material world. I mean, usually it's the spiritual or the. Don't, uh, don't you see, Harold? Every time Western man tries to understand something, mm -hmm. instead of looking within, as Jesus or the Buddha okay, or anybody the, said, the, the, the he, wisdom school. He's yeah, okay. got to go out. He's got to test it with something. Even mm -hmm. like you told me about what they're doing in Switzerland, and they're going to measure it within a nanosecond. What's a nanosecond? A billionth of a second. What is that? That's a very. That's a very. Amazing. Time is a creation of Western thought. Okay. okay. If you have no more sun, there will be no more time. Well, the sun's got a long way okay. to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I'm saying we only have a time concept because of the sun. But even if the sun wasn't here, everything would still be. Mm -hmm. All right? Well, that, yeah, my, well my, we would not. We yeah. would not, and we would not be able to take the measure. of Bucky Fuller, I mentioned to yes, you Yes, but we don't have to take is the there measure. Any, is there, what is there, how do you do, you have the wisdom schools, and everybody's been telling mm -hmm. us to take care of the least among you and all that sort of right. thing from all those schools, and you'll right. notice the political leadership, mostly men, and mm -hmm. patriarchy, mm -hmm. it seems to me, 
uh, have not been paying much attention to that is they just uh, shore up everything for themselves and have their political games they play in all of that. Harold, when you say mostly the men, right? Yeah. Well, and mostly, every, this has been going on here for half an hour now. You're thinking within the construct of Western thought. Well, it's Now, I showed you clearly when you remove Western thought in Africa, well, what have you in, got? in, okay. in, in oh, India, yeah. okay, there were no old age homes, there, there were no uh, orphanages, there were no reformatory. There wasn't any of that stuff. Uh -huh. So all this stuff that you're saying that men run is Western man has created that way of life, uh -huh. and it's falling down. It's imploding upon himself. Uh -huh. Right. Well, then, yeah, and, uh, yeah okay, so... Kipling used to say, like I I'm sorry, I don't That's mean right. to be, I understand materialism. What do we posit as opposed to materialism? Mystery or um, uh, intuition, you use the term. That's a great mm -hmm. thing you can respect. Or, you know, very often is posed materialistic as opposed to spiritual. Or to the larger school, I, wisdom schools. I'm trying to get what you posit. You could call it spiritual, but <clears throat> I don't like it in that context because that would by implication mean that a woman isn't spiritual, okay? And a woman certainly Hardly. can be I spiritual. Hardly, the other way around. Okay, yeah. right. So yeah. I don't like, I rather use the term unseen and seen. Yeah. And we need both. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is how the earth and the sun operate. Mm -hmm. We see, we focus on the earth. Mm -hmm. Mother Earth feeds us, it gives us food, it gives us water, it gives us what we need. That's the physical world. Mm -hmm. But Mother Earth could not function if the sun didn't provide the energy for that produce to grow. Mm -hmm. It couldn't function if it wasn't rotating around uh, the sun, if we didn't have night and day and, and winter and, and summer. Isn't that amazing? It's okay. uh, 13.7 billion now, years. All isn't of this, that that's the unseen, what I'm yeah. talking about. Right. That's unseen. It's, you can, yes, it's spiritual, yeah, okay, but it's unseen. Yeah, and, uh, and a lot of our mm. uh, best minds and yeah. spirituals have talked about being able see? to take cognizance of that so broader reality. We need... Yeah a balance. Mm -hmm. And you see, Western society is on balance. It's all the scientific approach, the analysis of this, the books of that, the, the, the government doing this, the department for that. That's all a creation of the Western world, and they made it a reality, mm -hmm. and now we worship it. It has become a god. And the men are so completely emasculated now that for any kind of a problem that comes up, mm -hmm. How do they resolve it? They want to go to, to the mayor, uh, uh, to the councilman, to the, to the governor, to the president, to the senator, to the doctor, to the this, to the that. But they no longer have control within themselves of anything, mm -hmm. of anything. That's men, women, and children? That's everybody. That's everybody, but uh -huh. men should have control. Now men. we gave it to the government. Don't you understand? That's the fundamental difference in Western society, and we have got it now all over the world. McDonald's is all over the world now. Yeah, they got so, a McDonald's 200 feet from the, from the head of the right. Sphinx, I think. You know, so, it's, so, I mean, they're everywhere. They're every, you know? So yeah. it's like if somebody says to you, well, if you don't like it here, Harold, go someplace else. Maybe to, yes, yeah, they say that. There is no someplace yeah. else. Where else am I going to go? It, it's, huh? they, where else are you going to go? Yeah. It's, all, it's all like this, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. So the world has been westernized. It's been westernized. Yeah, you, okay. Now, look at the condition of Western man. Mm -hmm. According to the World Health Organization, the number one health issue of England, the United States, and Canada is mental illness. Yeah, narcissism is okay. running wild. Mental yeah. illness. Mm -hmm. you know, I read an article in, in the Post the, the other day, somebody talking about the great legacy of, of the Anglo-American, you know, the English-American, you know, look what we've done economically. What, and I wrote to the fellow, look what you've done. We have the highest rates of, 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 uh, of depression. Our women, the American woman, mm -hmm. right, the number one uh, uh, dysfunctional uh, disease or what debilitating disease f of the American woman is depression. Yeah. Depressed. She's so liberated now, she's depressed to the tune of 10 million American women. Now this has progressed. Now we have three million girls who are depressed. 
and we're finding a major consideration in entering college now is how well staffed their psychiatry the public right mental upset right. yeah and and then the universities they're concerned the other way is how normal the, <laughs> are the ones they're bringing in this society is breaking down and it refuses to acknowledge it refuses because it can't see out of the narrow materialistic paradigm can't get out of its little world there well, isn't that characteristic of mankind as a whole? No, I you don't. don't. think it is. No, I don't. Man seems to mankind be... as a whole had patriarchy, okay? The European didn't. What, did patri what does patriarchy mean in terms of uh, social reality? What do you mean by that? Man, the head of the family, man yes, running but, things, right. man going out and getting yes, the bacon. Yes, you, you can man say and, that. Uh, However, and the women that's, barefoot, that, pregnant, and, and, and in the and kitchen. And yeah. Barefoot, pregnant, and working, want, right? Working. Now, what about uh, working? I uh, said in the kitchen. In the kitchen, working. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, taking now, care of the heart right. and home. And now, you're giving of, me, yeah. you, remember, you came up with these definitions, not me. No, you, I just you threw said these things. You just threw it up because that's Western thought. You see, that's clearly Western thought. We're doing that to the women. A lot of women are against patriarchy. They couldn't vote. I don't care. I, I don't. I don't even feel the men should vote. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Right. Uh, uh -huh. Now, l let me give you an example of how natural patriarchy would evolve overnight, Harold. Mm -hmm. Supposing we went, say, to Madison Square Garden yeah. here in New York, mm -hmm. and it was a family affair, whatever mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. right? And after the event was over, maybe 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, we come out of Madison Square Garden, and we don't see anybody. Mm. So we, I live near Madison yeah, Square Garden. Yeah, st we start yeah. going home, but no buses are running, mm. no trains, none of the shops are open, mm. the police aren't around. Mm -hmm. It's like something came from outer space and mm. swooped everybody up except those who were living who, who were in Madison, Madison Square, Square Garden. Garden. So eventually, the people will all migrate back to Madison Square Garden and say, where the hell is the rest of the world? Mm -hmm. Now, one of the first things that would be done, the women would start nurturing the children. We're going to have to spend a night here. Let's make a place for them to sleep. Let's see about what food do we have in this place, what water. The elders, like you, and me would meet and say, look, we've got to figure out what's going on. In the morning, let's send out a scouting party to see what's up. You can be rest assured we're not going to put any women in that scouting party because this might be all that's left. This might be it. So we're not going to sacrifice anybody that can procreate the race by sending them. And keep them uh, going. Right. Yeah, okay. So within 24 hours, we would establish a natural patriarchal order. What, 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 yeah, spell out what does it mean? The patriarchal includes uh, where the men, where the men going out. No, uh, very simply, as I said before, men provide the environment and the means for women to nurture the race, to bring forth life, and to nurture the race. Mm -hmm. And if Western men would ever start focusing that way, instead of conquering the world, taming nature, acquiring stuff, then you would have a shift. Never mind all that fancy uh, 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 synergy, synergy that, that, yeah, that yeah. you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not knocking it, No, that's Harold. all right. Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. But uh, we would have a different view of life then. You know, Sitting Bull, the, the, the Indian chief, yeah, yeah. in a talk to his people, mm -hmm. he said... The white man's desire for material things is like a disease. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. and, he, and if he were here today, he, he, he probably wouldn't be able to believe what he's seeing mm -hmm. now. Uh, uh, Carl Jung wrote in one of his, he spoke to an American uh, Indian chief, mm -hmm. and he said, the white man always seems unhappy. He never looks happy. Mm -hmm. He always wants more. Mm -hmm. He always wants more. Mm -hmm. We look upon it as, yes, that's why we have more. Mm -hmm. We never look upon it as, why do we need more? Mm -hmm. Why do we need more? Mm -hmm. you know, we have all these labor-saving devices 
in, in our society today. And what's the favorite word of the modern person? I'm busy. Mm -hmm. I'm busy. Yeah. I don't have time for this. Like I don't have time. in a cage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody's got time for anything. And we all have automobiles. We have this. We've got, we got everything, Harold. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. So, all right. I'm, I'm sorry I no, went off all. on, no, on no, a tangent I you, uh, yeah, on this. Yeah, I agree with you more on that. Uh, yeah. So, I'm just going to get a couple of things we want to show, okay? Oh, oh yes. Well, how much time do we have? We only got about three minutes left. That's it? Yes, oh, go Boy, when you're having fun. When you're having fun, yeah. No, no, before. What do you want to show? Yes. Show the book. Show the book. Show the book. And, and show the... All right. Look, I have my book. No, let me hold okay, it up. Okay, go ahead. Dear in. brothers and sisters, you know, gender and its Try responsibility. Try if you can. Yeah. Okay. And it's a good picture of you, George, on the back. And I've got a set of booklets here. Uh, uh, let me hold them, George. Yeah, I'll the, hold the them. First, I want to let the people uh, get the word out. The George, first one you. is 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 uh, 20th century decadence, 2,000 years of Western materialism, Here. patriarchy, the natural way of life, mm -hmm. why marriage, to my daughters, your power and responsibility. That's all women. Look at a deck of cards. To my sons. Okay. Yeah. I have okay. a website. They're here. But website. I didn't realize time was going I so know. fast. We got an Harold. emblem. We got an uh, emblem here. Uh, well, this, this is, is an this emblem. is my logo. This is the logo. Uh, Let's uh, show that. Let's show all this. this is Elder George, and he's okay. telling us he's got a thing. He's got the. What's it again? The website. Say it. What? Mensaction.net. Try and come in on this. Uh, exactly. Picture. How many minutes do we We've have? We've got uh, two. Okay, look, Harold, if we could put can that you, down. There it is. No, they're, yeah. they're showing that. Okay, that's, that's, that's all right. That's a traditional men's thing. Going that's okay. Out. Yeah. Now, now to show you no? the prejudice mm -hmm. in this society, uh -huh. all right? If, uh, do yeah, you, do you have it. to hold, hold them? It. Yeah. Okay, can you zone in on that? Yeah. Newsweek, America's okay. Best High Schools, Take right? Mm -hmm. No no boys. Mm -hmm. Newsweek, America's Best High Schools, no boys. All right. Mm -hmm. U.S. News didn't want to be outdone. America's outstanding high school. No boys. They're okay. We keep education. going all the way down the line here. Are our, our men obsolete? Are men obsolete? obsolete. Could be. Now, just, that's we, a, a paid uh, by, by uh, Mortimer Zuckerman. That's his magazine. Mortimer, yeah, okay. That's US News and so Report. that's yeah. the Western concept. We don't mm. need yeah. men anymore. Yeah. We'll get rid of the sun. Mother Earth will do just fine without the sun. It yeah. won't, folks. It uh, won't. Mm -hmm. We need men. We need women. We need a relationship. Uh -huh. we, we need a partnership. And that produces a synergy. All right. That's the synergy that's there. And, uh, well, Fuller used to say we had to cast about for a purpose of the universe. It was to move across to entropy and incre bring increased conscious understanding of the process of which we're a part. I think that's an important mm -hmm. part that will bring the tensional integrity to get the systems right. We may be on the mm -hmm. process of doing that now, and then if it does, we will have a synergistic realization at another level. That's my thought. We have a purpose in terms of trying to understand things. Your pleasure to have had the perception of this wonderful man, mm -hmm. Elder George. Well, thank you. And he's got, we're going to put your website up. Let's make sure we get the graphic with his website up at the end. And what is it? Why don't you say what it is, George? The, the name of yeah, the Yeah, no, the website. Where Mensaction.net. Mensaction.net. No apostrophe. No. M-E-N-S-A-C-T-I-O-N dot net. Mensaction.net. You'll mm -hmm. find me on YouTube. I'm starting now. You look under Elder George. Uh -huh. You'll find a few little things there. That's good. Uh, yeah, okay, good. They can go there and a lot of people can try. Well, and we're talking here on this day when they just passed it. Apparently in the House that bill's going to change the whole economic order and that's changing mm -hmm. under our feet. So things are changing and uh, we're at a time. This is a heck of a time to be alive and be interested. The Chinese say spare me from living in interesting times. That's shot to hell because these are really interesting oh, times, aren't they? It's, it's un unbelievable.